I heard a touching case this morning. Social workers report that children raised in foster care often bring attachment issues and hardly any role models into their adult relationships. Today's couple met in foster care and were struggling with those issues when they came to see me. Divorce court is now in session. I'm here today with Deja Golden and Christopher Barnett. The two of you have been together uh, for a, a, a considerable period of time. You have one child together. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you do not want to be together anymore. You have both asked me for some financial uh, thing, things that I need to resolve, and I will do that momentarily. But, Ms. Golden, I'm going to start with you. You have a fascinating story about how, when, and where you met, and I'd like you to tell, tell that to me. Um, well, we met in foster care when I was, like, 14, and he was 15, and, <laughs> um, I just, I don't, we immediately made a bond. Like, he was, like, pretty much the only person that I really talked to in foster care, and... It, How long were you in foster care? Um, I was in foster care off and on from the age of six months to 21. Six months to 21. How many foster homes were you in? Uh, I was in a lot of foster homes. I lost count. I was... You lost count over the, over the years? Oh, really? How long were you in, did you share a foster home with Mr. Barnett? Well, Mr. Barnett ran away a lot, so <laughs> we would like, kind of run into each other off and on. I think it was like three different placements that we ran into each other when he would run away, and then I would go to a different placement, and then, and he, then he would, he would be there. Yeah. He would end up there. Mr. Barnett, is that, is that, is that accurate? Absolutely. Was it, was it, was it nice to have somebody that you knew that was consistent in your life since you got moved from place to place to place? To be completely honest, Your Honor, not necessarily. Because when in placement, we would, the, rela the relationship that we had, I didn't know it was actually that. I thought we was just friends. Maybe one day we might have some sex because you know how kids are. You know, right. we're in the hormonal stage uh -huh. and everything. I don't get to go out and see no girls. The only girls you get to see is the ones in placement. But we kept running into each other. We kept making relationships, you know, little mm -hmm. relationships in the uh, placement together. So I guess it was kind of cool. It, it, it was cool, but it wasn't. But you didn't think it was a romantic thing until later. I didn't on. know it was gonna be. She wanted a full-fledged relationship she with her. I thought Chris she might want to just. Chris was a player. Like, when when did you find out she wanted a full-fledged relationship, and how did she convey that information to you? Okay, we was in a placement. We were 16. We were both in a placement, and we was at church. She wasn't at church, but another girl was at church with me. And the girl, you know, she saw me. She was like, oh, he's cute. Okay. She went back to the unit. She must have told Deja, oh, I just met this one guy. He's really cute. His name is such and such. And Deja looked at her from her own story. She told me herself. She looked at her and was like, oh, no, nah, that's mine. Anywhere I go, that's mine. He's mine. That's <laughs> my boyfriend. You can't have him. And almost literally almost fought the girl over me. And she don't even know me. Now, Ms. Golden, did you decide the two of you were in a relationship, but you didn't let him know? I didn't decide. Christopher is a liar, first of all. Christopher was the one at Youth in Need trying to talk to me, not the other way around. And Christopher was talking to every girl in there. Point exactly, Your Honor. Well, that, I think that's kind of what he's saying. He's yeah. saying, I was playing the field, and you thought that's, he that's was what exclusively he told me. yours. That's exactly what he told me. Just like when he ran away, he told me we were going to run away together, and he left me. Did you do that? I don't recall that oh, per okay. se. I think the situation happened a little bit differently. I well, remember what do you supposed... think happened? I remember us talking one night that uh, let's uh, run away together. And then that morning, she, I, I recall her bagging out of it. She was like, oh, no, I don't want to do it. And I'd already made up in my mind, because when I was in placement, I ain't going to lie, I was a runner. I hated being in placement. It was nothing worse than being in those facilities for me. So, and she chose that she didn't want to do it, but that wasn't going to stop my plans. So another <laughs> girl said she wanted to. So you Let's took go. her. He's a liar. He ran away and left me. He told me I'm going to go smoke a cigarette. And then when I came downstairs, he was gone. Her, him and the girl, and they told me, oh, he ran away with the girl, and he was like, forget you, he just left. And then when I seen him the next time, he was like, well, I had to go because I was having a baby, so that's why I left you. You were having a baby? He was having a baby. He was having a baby with the other girl? Mm -mm. You, another girl all together? Mm -hmm. okay. Explain that to me. Oh, well, I had got... I was in placement from the age of 12 to 18 when they okay. kicked me out of care. And throughout those times, you know, you get home visits with your family and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I had got a, uh, another girl pregnant at the time. So I was kind of running away, I guess, to go to her. Mm -hmm. OK. And you knew about this other girl? I didn't know until he told me she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. How long and when did... before you two got pregnant together? 
Um. I know, Your Honor. Hmm? Well, well, tell it me, was Mr. Barnett. Two months into you know. us officially becoming a couple that she got pregnant. Okay. How old were you when you officially became a couple? Oh, uh, 24. Yeah, this I was is 23. now. This is. You guys were both out of placement by then. Yeah. You guys were grown. Did you just run into one another again? Yep. Mm -hmm. And so tell, explain how that went and how you decided to be a couple after you ran into each now, other. Now this is again. a tricky story. Now one day I was coming home from work. I asked her on the bus. She's like, "Hey, Chris. Hey, how you doing?" We exchanged numbers and everything. And like the next day we talked and we talked. We had a real good conversation. I'm talking about. I must have walked around the neighborhood for like six hours because at this time. Mm -hmm. I was still with my baby, uh, the mother of my kids. Mm -hmm. Which he lied about. But okay, she knew. hang on, hang on. So anyway, so, so she came, um, we started hitting it off and everything, but the problem at that time was that she didn't know if she wanted to be where we was uh, in St. Louis, she might have wanted to move, and I didn't know if me and my um, mother and my children was gonna, you know, officially break up, because we was together. She, mm -hmm. knew, she knew she was no, cheating on she was, Hang on. She knew she was cheating on, no, um, helping me cheat on my baby mama. No, I didn't. Hey, Ms. Ms. Golden, I'm gonna get to you, I promise, <laughs> I promise. So, so, what is your version of that event? Like, half of what he said was true. Yes, we did meet on the bus. Yes, we did talk for a while on the phone, but, what he told me was his baby mama mysteriously ran off. They weren't together anymore. He had the house by himself. And so the first time I came over, I seen like, uh, I think some jury or something on the table. And I was like, I asked him about it. And he was like, oh, she hasn't came and got all her things yet, but she doesn't live here. And that was the impression that he told me, like, they're not together, she don't even be there, she don't even want to see the kids and all that, or whatever. So that's what I thought. But I pieced it together once he start um, magically saying I couldn't come over anymore. Mr. Barnett, that is what happened. I mean, it's all over your face that that's exactly what occurred, isn't it? Yes. She was like, I got his number, and she pulled out, out her phone and she showed me the number. The number she had happened to be his tablet number. Not his real number, but his tablet number. Because he knows I don't got the password to his tablet. Ooh, Mr. Barnett, you are so busted. Are you recently married but ready to call it quits? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. So, Ms. Golden, I'm, I'm, I'm going to move things forward here and talk to you about the concerns that you have this relationship and why it's ending now. You have a three-month-old together, correct? Yes. But you say that Mr. Barnett is verbally abusive. Yes. Why don't you explain that to me? Well, I have these pair of sandals that I bought when I was pregnant. And every time I wear them, he calls them thought flops. And he's like, oh, women in pornos wear those, so they're thought flops. Or one time I had put on some lipstick because I forgot where we were going, and he told me I looked like a thought. Or his favorite word is just to call me a bee whenever he feels like it. Do, do, first of all, is it true that women in pornos wear flip-flops? It's not, it's not the, uh, the flip-flop per se, and it's, it's just it's the style of the flip-flop. You know those are thought shoes. Thought shoes? Mm -hmm. Do you have mind. a whole thought apparel? Thought in outfit, his mind. thought swag. Do you think she, that, does she dress like that? Is she inappropriately, she looks appropriately dressed today? Do you believe she doesn't dress right? You, you're dressing like you're trying to attract a man. Flip you got flops, one. lipstick, you got one. Why make you, have you to dress look like, like that. that. No, it's the, it's the way you're doing it. I still I can't get to sex now. and, and, and flip-flops. Like I mean, I'm just, I mean, I wear flip-flops all the time. Now I'm scared. <laughs> you know, I may have to put on some other shoes. It's these little blue shoes. They got a lot of straps on them. What blue shoes do I own that have straps on? Them? You know, the ones with the blue let's let's, let's not go there. Let's not, let, 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 let's, let's not go there. Do you do you do you admit or agree that you are in fact um, that you call her names and are verbally unkind to her, oh, absolutely whether or not. not you have a point oh, about the, yeah. the, the absolutely her not. attire? No, I'm not like that. Like, I, I'm not going to sit here and say, uh, lie and say I've never called her a name. You know, mm -hmm. arguments happen. But it don't even it's have not, to it's, be an argument. It's not me first starting it. You know what I'm saying? It's... Daisy gets mad really quickly. And mm -hmm. sometimes I'm, you know, I'm, I'm more the me mellow, laid-back no, type not. of guy. So Ms. Golden? He's now, not. you're proving his point right He's there. He's not, though. He's trying to tell me... Well, he may not be, but you're helping his point that you <laughs> cannot control your, 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 
your verbalization. But Chris just lies you, so you, much. It just just really Ms. irks Ms. me. Ms. Golden. Do you get angry? Oh yeah, I get angry. What but do you get I'm angry not about? Are, are, is it over jealousy or is it over? No, I'm never I'm never jealous. Well, what are you angry about? The well, fact that Chris lies, like at his job that he previously had. Mm -hmm. Um, he told me he wanted me to work there after I had my baby. And I had the baby, I got the interview. He first wouldn't tell me where the job was because he said he didn't want me to work there. So I had a feeling like he had somebody else at his job mm -hmm. that he was talking to. Because how at first you want me to work there, now you don't. And now you won't even tell me where it right. is. So when I, I get lost on the way, and there's two girls that's on the bus that have on the work uniform going back towards the Metrolink. Mm -hmm. So I asked the girls about him. And what do you know? they like, he didn't even tell us he was in a relationship. He going around showing your baby pictures, talking about you was just a one night stand. He don't even know if the baby is his. So then they tell me about another girl, and they was like, yeah, he was in the bathroom with her by himself. So some months passed, and I had an interview across the street from where he used to work. So the girl that they say he cornered in the bathroom, I run into her. So I ask her or whatever about Chris. She said the same thing. He nasty. Everybody up there think he burning because he always trying to have sex with everybody. He cornered me in the bathroom, was kissing all on my neck. And she was like, I got his number. And she pulled out, out her phone and she showed me the number. The number she had happened to be his tablet number. Not his real number, but his tablet number. Because he knows I don't got the password to his tablet. Ooh, Mr. Barnett, so, you are so busted. So, no, 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 so, no, 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 no. You no. are so busted. So, women, you know, you cannot conduct a sexual relationship with a whole bunch of women in a small area because we talk. I feel like she should pay me to watch him because if I wasn't there, some you would have to pay somebody to watch Zay. Or watch somebody my... that's not his father. You're his father. That is your job. That's your responsibility. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. Now, Mr. Barnett, you were very honest with me in the beginning about the nature of your, your relationships, that there, that there are a number of women in your life most of the time. Have you changed? Yes. Are you exclusive with Ms. Golden? So you believe yes. that all of those stories that those women told simply aren't true? Absolutely. 100%. 100%. Now, there's a def... Like, I'm not going to sit here and lie again. Okay. When I'm at work, there, I, I, there's something work that I flirting. call work flirt. And, you know, it's cool to, you know, enemy with your uh, co-workers now. And my co-workers are kind of young. I'm 25. They're around 18, 19. So they're in that stage where they want to get out, party. We, you know, we all talk around the thing. And one thing, uh, one thing was said, and one girl took it that way. Doesn't mean necessarily I want to do that. I said I give. You, let me ask you this: You're charming, nice-looking guy. You're at work with some 18-year-old. The 18-year-old expresses willingness to have some kind of sexual encounter with you. Do you do you take her up on it or yes. you walk Absolutely off? Absolutely not. Absolutely yes. not. And I have, a, I have one good reason. Why? Her right there. I'm not finna to kill me. Nah, nah, I can't do that. I you, can't scared, do that. you scared yes, of them? Yes, very scared of them. Right. Yes, I ain't got no problem admitting it. I'm gonna ask about the baby now, because this has something to do with the money that you want, Mr. Barnett, and I wasn't quite sure I understood exactly what went on. There was some kind of scheme that he was trying to cook up mm -hmm. to get the state to pay him to babysit his own kid. Yeah, Explain it to me, Ms. Golden, because I don't know how it works. Um... Since he blows. feels like if he watches the baby for me, he feels like he should get paid to watch the baby. Either I should pay him or the state should pay him to watch the baby, which I feel isn't right because, first of all, that's your child. How do you manage to get the state to pay you to babysit? It's a, um... It's a, like, daycare thing where whoever, like, you could say a family member is watching a kid and they'll get paid a certain amount of money. Oh, so the state's the trying to assist people in working. So mm -hmm. if you have a situation where you have a child mm -hmm. and you, and you did, did you want the state to pay you to to watch your baby? Yes. Why do you think we should pay you to take care of your own baby? It's not it's not that y'all paying me to take care of my own baby. It's just like the the situation that we in now. If I work in in my state, if I work, child support hits me so hard it makes it un. Un, uh, unavailable for me to be able to live. I can't pay bills. I can't, you know, I can't do anything. I just can't live. So with that being said, 
I would I want to take the stay at home dad job. Okay. And I won't like is you know we've already talked about this many a times. I bring I could bring home two hundred dollars two hundred fifty dollars on a good paycheck at my job. That's a good paycheck two hundred and fifty dollars. She could bring fourteen hundred dollars home every paycheck. Which one would make more sense? So on? You should be the stay at home dad. I got that part, but I still don't understand why you think the state should pay you to do it, or that I should pay him to watch or the kids. That too. It's more. I feel like she should pay me to watch him because if I wasn't there, uh, if I wasn't there through, let's say nine to four o'clock, some you would have to pay somebody to watch Zay. Or watch somebody my... that's not his father. You're his father. That is your job. That's your responsibility. In divorce court, couples tell me everything about their relationships. Want to share your experience? Join the conversation on our Twitter page at Divorce Court. On Facebook, check out other fans and their intimate issues. You know everybody has something to say about love. What's on your mind? Ms. Golden, you've asked for $300 for a broken cell phone, and you want $300 for the babysitting your son because you honestly believe that you should be paid for that. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. I think I know why you think that, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work, work with you on that one. Tell me about the, t the phone, quickly. Okay, when I was pregnant, he got upset because I told him it was over. He snapped my phone in half and trapped me in the house until I listened to him. Did you do that, Mr. Barnett? No. Yes. What happened to her phone? It got broke. By? Both of us. We you? were both wrestling for it. Like, we were snatching it out of each other's hands. One, one second she snatched it, because the argument started because she had the phone right, but, like, right next to my head on the mm. speakerphone doing something. And I was like, girl, can you not do that, you know, right next to my ear? And she was like, boy, whatever. The room. And right. then I grabbed her phone. And I, I threw it on it the over. floor. Right. That didn't break the phone. Right. She got up all mad. Nope. And she was like, oh, it's over since you want to um, mess my phone up. Right. And I'm like, your phone? We, we gonna break up, break up with me over a phone? So I snatched it from her. She snatched it back. We kept going back and forth. I got it. No, he Could've broke my phone in half, kept breaking it, kept breaking it, kept breaking it, kept breaking it, and then he threw it around and was like, now you ain't got no phone. You ain't finna leave me. And so I tried to walk out the door to get away from the situation, and that's when he came, blocking me from the door. I even tried to jump out the window nine months pregnant. We could argue about this all day long, but we're gonna have a conversation instead. And I wanna give you guys something. I wanna give you some advice. You got shorted. You didn't get that stable home and upbringing that you were entitled to, and I'm sorry about that. And the system that you got thrown into is dysfunctional from the beginning to the end, and I'm sorry about that as well. I'm part of that state, too, that created that chaos for you. And, I, and, and I'm, I'm distressed that it is that way, and I am impressed, I will say that, that the two of you have come out to be as rational as you are. You make some, you've made some mistakes and some errors, but none of them any greater than the rest of the nonsense that people bring me up in here. So I'm impressed with your ability to do that. I'm gonna say that, but I'm gonna say something else. The structure that you didn't get, you need to provide to the people that you're making. You have children, you have children, you're going to have to figure out how to provide them with a structure that you didn't get. Fatherhood is an in-home activity. It is something that you're responsible for emotionally, physically, and economically. That's why you don't get paid for it, because it's abnormal. It is not right for fathers not to be in the home. It may not be abnormal anymore, but it's not the best of circumstances. And you want to give your child the best of circumstances, and that is that he is not an object to be uh, paid to watch, but he is your primary responsibility. Do you understand that? Yes. You two were both tussling over the phone. I'm not gonna give anybody any money, but what I'm gonna say is this. You got shorted, but don't short each other. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because you're beautiful people, and, you, and you've made a beautiful child, I'm sure, and I want you to have a beautiful future. You with me? Good luck to both of you. This matter is a good one. People do what they know. What I liked about Deja and Christopher was that they understood what they knew wasn't right, but they didn't know how to change it. I hope I helped them.